I'm Ashley Kyle. And I'm Bob Spicer. And this is your Lake of the Ozarks news update brought to you by Lake TV and LakeExpo.com and sponsored by Old Kinderhook Golf Resort and Yacht Club Power Sports. And in this week's episode, <laughs> we'll be looking at local passports that offer more than just a stamp on a page. A local church focusing on underwear. A new smartphone app for Missouri hunters. Lori Fall Follies Car Show. And of course, we'll preview lots of events coming to the lake area this week. All that and more coming up after a message from Old Kinderhook. Old Kinderhook at Lake of the Ozarks has everything for your getaway in one convenient location. Featuring a Tom Weisskopf designed golf course. The Trophy Room offers a unique dining experience with an amazing view serving breakfast, lunch and casual dining. Old Kinderhook is your perfect stay and play destination, offering nightly and weekly accommodations, marina facilities, a luxurious spa and an event space to host a variety of different occasions. Discover your place at the lake, call for 2014 rates and information or visit us online. Like the TV announcer always says, the cars are the stars, and the stars were out in abundance at the annual 2014 Fall Follies Car Show in Lurie, Missouri. My name is uh, Gene Pandy Wustein, and I know you can't spell that, and I'm the chairman of the car show here, and right now we have 157 cars already registered. We are a little bit down because of the weather this year. The Rotary Club here, local Rotary Club from Lurie Sunrise Beach started this car show, approximately this is the 10th year for it and it benefits the lake aquatic center that we have here in the city of lori and the youth in the community one of the classics that caught our eye was this stunning corvair spider the car deemed unsafe at any speed by a guy named ralph nader back in the 60s this is a 1963 chevrolet corvair monster spider it was uh, one of Chevrolet's very first rear engine cars, and this model here was one of Chevrolet's very first turbo models. Uh, this is a convertible, a uh, very rare model. This is what they call the Spider. Corvair has a very dark history in that. Uh, they came out in 1960 in that, and then uh, due to Ralph Nader, um, he kind of put it into the Corvair era. Uh, basically, un unsafe at any speed is what they labeled the Corvair as. Another classic that caught our eye this year was this heavily customized Buick convertible owned by Larry Jenkins of Bell Vista, Arkansas. Yeah, I'm Larry Jenkins from Bella Vista, Arkansas, and I've got a 53 Buick Super convertible, and it's sitting on air rides. Got a big block 454 with 700 R transmission. Got red leather interior with red alligator. Uh, the hood's been pancaked. Got a 53 Cadillac trunk on it. Got electric windows, doors. Got uh, 18 inch rims on it. There are eights on the front, nines on the back. Uh, it's been completely restored off the frame. All in all, this year's Fall Follies Car Show was an interesting and exciting blend of classic old and pretty new. And I can't wait for next year's show. For Lake TV, I'm Bob Spicer in Laurie, Missouri. Businesses along the west side of Osage Beach are gearing up for an event they hope will highlight some great places to shop. And the city of Osage Beach is pitching in its resources to help. The Passport to the Parkway is scheduled for October 1st through 10th and will offer prizes and discounts to customers who shop along Parkway West or the west side of Osage Beach Parkway. At last week's city board meeting, the Osage Beach Board of Aldermen volunteered to donate advertising services for the event. This city leases space on the digital billboards at the Green Glaze Bridge to provide promote the business district and city services. This month, those billboards will remind drivers about the passport to the parkway. You know, sometimes accidents happen, and when they happen at the Camdenton School District's elementary school, sometimes a change is required. That is a change in clothes. So, Harper Chapel United Methodist Church recently held its annual Undie Sunday, bringing in an extra underwear and socks for district schools. Donations were distributed to schools throughout the district to be used when accidents happen. Well, the numbers are in and the Missouri Highway Patrol says it made plenty of stops and a handful of arrests on the water over Labor Day weekend at the lake. On Saturday and Sunday, August 30th and 31st, troopers stopped 42 boats and issued 98 warnings. They also made five arrests for boating while intoxicated. Labor Day weekend is typically the last busy weekend of the summer boating season and it signals the beginning of what many local boaters considered the best time to boat. When the lake is less busy and the water is still warm and the fall leaves begin to put on a show. 
In recent years, hunters have been taking a new tool into the woods, their smartphones, and the Missouri Department of Conservation has developed an app for that to help hunters have an even better hunting experience. The app is called Mo Hunting, and you can download it for Android and Apple devices. There's information about hunting seasons, the ability to purchase a hunting or fishing permit, and you can even register your harvest all within the app. To begin, you will need your conservation number, so make sure you have that handy, or visit the Conservation Department website for more info. A coroner's jury has decided the death of a handcuffed man who drowned while in the custody of a Water Patrol trooper in accident. The incident occurred in May of this year and has raised questions about highway and Water Patrol training procedures. The jury's ruling came after the jury heard testimony from witnesses and the trooper who arrested Brandon Ellingdon. Trooper Anthony Piercy has been with the Highway Patrol for nearly 20 years, but volunteered for Water Patrol in 2012. In his testimony, Piercy said more training is needed for troopers who will be on the water. He said he was never trained about what kind of life jacket to use when performing an arrest. Ellingson presumably fell overboard once the Highway Patrol boat was underway and his life jacket came off. Piercy was unable to rescue him. Last week's ruling will be taken into consideration by the prosecutor when deciding whether to file charges. The Ellingson family reportedly does plan on pursuing a civil lawsuit. Looks like there's a job opening at the Lake West Chamber of Commerce. The chamber is taking applications for a new executive director after Carrie Mason has announced she'll be stepping down. She took the position back in February of this year, replacing longtime director Mike Kanagi. The chamber said Mazen was resigning due to unforeseen circumstances. Resumes for the position can be mailed to the chamber headquarters, Lake West Chamber Board President, P.O. Box 340, Sunrise Beach, Mo 65079, or emailed to search at lakewestchamber.com. A local golf course recently made it into Sports Illustrated. The Ridge at the Lodge of Four Seasons was featured in Golf Magazine's list of the best courses near you for the month of September. The Ridge is a par 72 course designed by Ken Kavanaugh and uses natural elevation changes to enhance the experience. It's another testament to the growth of high quality golfing at the lake that is gaining the attention of players nationwide. There's a couple of 5K events coming this weekend at the lake on Saturday. Citizens Against Domestic Violence will hold its annual Make the Break Fun Run. The race will run in memory of Brandy Matthews, a local woman who was murdered some years ago by a man that was once her boyfriend. Funds raised by the 5K will support CADV. The organization helps protect people who have suffered from domestic violence and provides resources to help them make the break and escape harmful relationships. Cost to register is $25, and the event begins at 10 a.m. at the Lynn Creek City Park. There will also be a kids' play area, some barbecue, and some silent auctions going on. Also on Saturday, the Lake Ozark Fire District Benevolent Association will host a freedom run on Saturday to commemorate firefighters who lost their lives in the attacks on September 11th. Runners will each receive a photo of a firefighter killed in the line of duty that day, and funds raised by the event will help the district shop with a fireman program, which takes local kids Christmas shopping. The 5K will be along Bagnell Dam Boulevard beginning at 8 a.m. at the Dam Bait Shop. The cost to register is $25 in advance and $30 the day of the event. Coming up, we'll look at more events around the lake this weekend after a message from Yacht Club Power Sports. We'll be right back. Things are looking up. Things are looking up at Yacht Club Power Sports. On the water, in the woods, or on the streets. At Yacht Club Power Sports, we have your ticket to ride. Like an awesome lineup of Can-Am ATVs and side-by-sides. The Can-Am Maverick Max can tear up the trail or you can make your own trail. Come into Yacht Club Power Sports and check out the all-new Sea-Doo Spark. Things are looking up at Yacht Club Power Sports in Osage Beach, under the big red sign in front of High V. Yacht Club Power Sports, where the fun begins and never ends. There's a lot to do at the lake this week. On Thursday, Iguana Fireworks lights up the sky at Iguana Cove. That's near Bagnell Dam at the one-mile marker. The show starts at 915. And on Thursday, the lake will rumble with choppers, cruisers, and crotch rockets with the beginning of the Bike Fest. The event draws thousands of bikers to the lake to enjoy scenic cruises, hundreds of biker-friendly bars and restaurants, and lots of live music. Oh, and this year they're giving away a free Harley-Davidson motorcycle. For a closer look at the event schedule, check out lakebikefest.com. On Friday, the uh, second annual CC for a Cure Golf Classic comes to the Eldon Golf Club. The tournament is put on by Columbia College, hence the name CC. 
And funds raised go to the local campus's Phil Davis Scholarship and the Miller County Relay for Life. Saturday and Sunday, the Eldon VFW will host a gun show. There will be around 50 tables and the admission is $5 per person. There will also be food and drinks available and all the proceeds from the event will benefit veterans programs. And if you like garage sales, you're going to love this one. Saturday, September 13th is the date for the Osage Beach Citywide Garage Sale. You can sign up at City Hall if you want your location included on the garage sale map. Cost for that is $10 or for $15 you can set up a booth at City Hall parking lot. The buying and selling starts at 8 a.m. I'll be there. <laughs> On Sunday evening, the Ozark Jazz Society will bring the Funky Butt Brass Band to Osage National Golf Resort. The concert is from 6.30 to 9 p.m. with a buffet from 5 to 6.30. The first ever Grand Glaze Benefit Car Show is coming to Osage Beach on Sunday. The show will be just to the east of the Grand Glaze Bridge on Osage Beach Parkway in front of Andy's and Panera Bread. Lanes will be closed to traffic that day and spectators can park at Andy's, Panera Bread, KFC or Papa Wheelie's. Hosted by the Lake of the Ozarks Car Club, admission is free. The uh, sponsoring restaurants will also donate 15% of sales to the Truefields who was born premature and needs surgery to help her with cerebral palsy. The show will run from 3 to 7 p.m. that day. Check out some classic cars, support a great cause. This has been your Lake of the Ozarks News Update. I'm Ashley Kyle. And I'm Bob Spicer. Thanks for joining us uh, on Charter Cable 197 and Como Connect Channel 90. And we'll see you again next time. Welcome to Lake of the Ozarks. You're watching Lake TV, your visitor information station on Charter Cable Channel 197 and Como Connect Channel 90 or from anywhere at MyLakeTV.com. Stay tuned to Lake TV to get all the latest on activities and attractions, events, entertainment, boating, outdoors, shopping, lake history, and dining at Lake of the Ozarks.